The Louisiana Christian University Wildcats football team opens its season with a 34-14 victory over East Texas Baptist University to keep the border claw here in Pineville. Welcome to this week's edition of the chat with head coach Drew Maddox, who joins us on the set now. And coach, first of all, congratulations on your opening win for the season. Thanks, Al. It was, uh, it was good anytime you get to beat a rival and, and play the first game and uh, get the dub. It's, it's a big deal. So uh, we're, we're pleased with our effort and our outcome. Well, the first game, you never sometimes kind of know exactly what you're going to get. Uh, you've ha put in all the work over the summer and in your fall camp, but until you kind of get out there on the field, it, it's a little bit of a mystery until you see what these guys do on the field together against an opposing team. Yeah, absolutely. I've, uh, everybody asked me a couple times uh, going into it, you know, like, how do you feel? I'm like, well, I've been head coach since 2018, and I never know how to answer that because yeah. I found out, you know, I think I'm, I might be three and two or whatever I am as a head coach during the, uh, those opening days. But you learn a whole lot the first opening day about your team and see where your preparation was. So, yeah, it was, <laughs> you know, you're kind of like, what's going to happen and all that, even as a coaching staff. You know, you feel good about it, but you're not sure. And so, uh, anyways, it was it was good. It was a good outcome. We, we were prepared and we were ready. And uh, players just played extremely hard, even some of the stuff we as coaches had to you know, we didn't really know what they were going to do with them having a new offensive coordinator and stuff like that. So we had to kind of figure all that out as we went. And uh, the players uh, made us look better in spots sometimes. So <laughs> that's, that's nice to have. Yep. Obviously, it was a huge day for your running attack, rushing for nearly 300 yards on the ground. Do you see that as being kind of the, the staple of the offense this year? Uh, maybe. So I've always just kind of said, you know, we kind of prided ourselves in, uh, in doing whatever we have to do to win. And that's all that matters. And so uh, the other day we were creasing them. I think we, we seven yards a pop running the ball. So we didn't really have to throw the ball. And so, uh, you know, when you're doing that and you have guys like Briscoe and Daylon Charles and then uh, Tavion uh, Cunningham who came in and ran really well and, and Rashawn West who ran really well when he came in. So we, we were hitting on all cylinders in the run game, but we were still efficient. I think we were 12 of uh, 17, I think with Sal. And then we, you know, we almost hit that, uh, that, uh, that pass, the uh, double pass that we had going on. So uh, that, that's a 0 for 1, but we're 12, 12 of 17 with our starting quarterback. So we, could, we were very efficient in the pass game. We got first downs when we needed to and all that. So uh, it was good. Absolutely. Um, as far as the passing game goes, how do you see that developing through the course of this season? Yeah, I think it'll get better. You know, uh, I think it'll get better. And it's, it's like I said, it might get better this week. You know, we might have a chance this week to um, – you know, really open that up a little bit with what, what we're going to see mm -hmm. in the passing game. Uh, and so, you know, they're a one high safety look and normally that that's a little bit better to, to throw up against. So, uh, but we'll see, they run it pretty well. So we'll see if we can do that or not, but uh, it'll develop as time goes on. We've got some good receivers and some of them are young and they're trying to figure it out and then all that. But the good news is we know Sal and he's, he's put up 300 yard games before and right. we know he can do it again. On the flip side of the football defense, uh, you guys were on your game pretty much from, from the start, only giving up 14 points. Seven of that came kind of late in the game. Uh, what did you see on defense that you especially liked this last week? Yeah, uh, biggest deal for us, uh, they ran to the football. I mean, it, we had some missed tackles, which normally happens in week one and two, but there were so many people around uh, around the ball that we, we could – stack off that and the first guy hit him and maybe didn't bring him down but the second guy hit third guy hit fourth guy and then he's down mm -hmm. and so uh the best part is they were really running to the football and uh and doing a great job there and so the rest of it was we had some technique stuff we had to clean up you know the opening touchdown was we got out of gap and got out of our responsibility a little bit and uh they took advantage of it and then like you said there was one late there when uh it was it was already over and uh we had some guys in that we don't normally play sure. and so uh uh, it was good. It was good to see. It was a good win for Coach Tyson Anders. It was his first year or first game calling defense uh, for us, and I felt like he did a great job. Uh, to be honest with you, I thought maybe I would, <laughs> I thought maybe I would, I would have more input, you know, game time as I do that from time to time. But I didn't have to. He hmm. he did a great job, and uh, we worked well together, and we we kind of went back and forth on uh, what uh, what we were going to do, and he did a great job. I felt like calling the game. Big game for Bubba Reed. He had two and a half tackles for loss, had a one and a half sacks, and was named the conference player of the week on defense this week. Yeah, so Bubba is everything. You know, I kind of mentioned him, I think, last week as uh, a guy that could really play. And uh, he was, a uh, you know, an all-conference guy last year for us, honorable mention, and he'll probably get more of that 
Uh, he's a leader on our defense. He carries out the black flag over there. If you'll ever notice, he's the guy running down the hill with the black flag. And we always, the guy that kind of the senior that kind of exudes what we want on defense, that's what, that's what he is. And so he's a great human being and does everything pretty much right. And, uh, and so he's, I hope he gets more of those. He, he deserves them and he works hard. And he's kind of like our, you know, as Sal is to the, offense Bub is to the defense he lines us up we can tell him things that we just tell him like hey if this happens we need to do this and he'll do it and he barely rarely misses that he sees it and understands what's going on so it's kind of like having a coach on the field in that aspect it's really good and when you talk about that defense it really starts up front I don't know if there was a better front four in all of NAIA than, than what you guys bring into it this year yeah, those guys, they play hard. They've been with me, you know, I coach them and uh, the defensive line and, and uh, they've been with me. Those guys have just been good to me. They work hard and do what I ask them to do and they kind of take my mentality on, I think, a little bit. And uh, you just got a bunch of guys that don't make excuses. They just play hard and they don't care if they're getting held. You never hear someone's holding me. Uh, they just try to, they try to play their best that they can. And Ernest, I kind of, Ernest Simon came in, you know, he's taking over from Mike Latin's role. And I don't know if you noticed, but he was back there a lot. You know, it was like I told, I kind of told everybody, I was like, he's going to be fine. I mean, it's hard to replace Michael Latin, but if we had to, Ernest Simon's my guy, you know. And so uh, he did a great job. And, and Lakeelan Bozier is just that he hadn't been blocked. The same way I've been telling everybody about Briscoe, uh, you know, we can't tackle him. And I think a lot of everybody kind of saw that on display for the offensive side. But it was, it's been the same way this, this fall camp and all the practices with Lakeelan. And, uh, and Big Wheel's just super solid in the middle, and he's so hard to move and uh, does a great job. Is, and, and Bremer is, you know, everybody knows who Bremer is. So uh, it's, it's, they're a, a group that, and then the 2D, I mean, Ty, Tyrese Ellis is really good. Like, he comes in all the time in the middle because he's just as good as those guys. He really is. And uh, Tay uh, Elders on the outside is another outside guy. And then we got, uh, you know, last year or last week, uh, Kendall Rowan did a great job. He's a Lamar transfer that we, we brought in. He played really well. Uh, and Amar Lewis. So there's, there's a rotate. There's an eight-man rotate. And there's a couple other guys, freshmen, that are really good too that I'm trying to get on the field. So uh, they wreaked havoc. They did everything we asked them to do. They fit right almost all night long uh, in the run game. That's such a big deal. So uh, we're proud of those guys. Uh, I thought on special teams, your kicker, Levi Hillborn, two out of three on field goals and also converting on extra points, four out of four. That kicking game, you're always just looking for consistency. Yeah, absolutely. I thought we did a great job. Uh, you know, uh, Coach Weaver comes in to do our special teams now. He's our O-line coach and uh, special teams. I felt like we were really probably the most prepared I felt like we've done. Uh, we had one bust and they blocked the blocked the. Uh, blocked, uh, blocked the field goal on us because we were actually down a man. We didn't have, we were 10, oh. we had 10 on the field. <laughs> yeah. So I would, I would hope they could block that one. Uh, and so we, 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 you know, we talked about it and we'll get that fixed. But Levi did a great job. I, mean, I think, I think he had, they're right at the 30 yard range, both of those. And uh, we just want to be automatic. I tell him, like, we're going to kick, you know, because our defense is really good and it puts pressure on people because we can kick up to 45 yard field goals pretty consistent. And so we'll continue to do that and put pressure on everybody to try to keep up with us if we get down there and we stall out. And so he's done a great job, and uh, Coach Weaver's done a great job getting those guys, coaching them up, and uh, hopefully we can just keep getting better. That's a spot that I felt like last year, towards the end of the year, we got pretty good at it, and it kind of helped us on that win streak. And so we want to see that continue. And I felt like from a wholesale the other day, it, it really did. I feel like we were better uh, in the special teams area. How do you come out of the game injury-wise? So what does that look like for you? Yeah, so we had a couple of catastrophic. So uh, that we got two guys that are going to be out uh, for the year uh, at the O-line spot, which is uh, which is tough. It's a place we aren't really that deep on. And so it's going to be open. You know, it's kind of open season right there. It's like, well, who can figure it out? Uh, you know, we got guys that – we got a guy that we think can maybe do it, but, you know, he's got to practice hard and he's got to figure out how to get in shape and all that and if he's going to be what, what we think he can be. And – so it's it's kind of open right there. Uh, other than that, we had a couple other guys get get sustained some injuries, but uh, anytime you have the same position uh, on the O line go down, <laughs> left guard and left guard, uh, uh -huh. then it's it's tough. So uh, you know we we've had to kind of shuffle around a little bit and do all that, but we'll be all right. Uh, the, we played in the whole second half was uh, with with that you know that substitution and, and we looked all right. 
Uh, if we could have got off the field on defense in the third quarter, we would probably have been just fine. But they scored uh, and, and ran the ball well and grinded them out late. So we'll be fine. All right, up next for you is going to be Arkansas Baptist coming up on Saturday, 6 o'clock at Wildcat Stadium. Um, last year, you guys defeated them 42-14, to and that was kind of the win that, that set you off on that winning streak the rest of the year. Yeah, so what we, we watched, we've been watching the film. You know, I was watching actually right before I came up here. Uh, and so, you know, they played Houston Christian, which is a Division One opponent last week. And uh, so they got some talented guys, though. They really do. Uh, they really do. I was hoping it would be easier, you know, when I watched it on film. So uh, anyways, uh, but but we just got to come out and play. And, yeah, it got us kind of started last year. Uh, but I just feel like that was – it was really other things got it started, and they just happened to manifest on the field there that day, and then it, it kind of gave us the confidence. So uh, like I told our players today, you know, we, we had practice this morning and all that. Uh, and I told them, we, we got to go. We don't have any days that we can we can slough off, that it's college football and everybody's really good. And uh, and we'll have to go and play our best and practice our best and be as good as we can be. It's also going to be uh, the Orange Out game. Yep. Everyone encouraged to wear orange this yep. Saturday. And free admission for military and first responders, which I'm sure for you that's pretty close to your heart. Yeah, it is. It's, a, it's an awesome deal. Uh, you know, so uh, hopefully some of my military buddies might come out and all that. But uh, orange it out and, and hopefully just come on. That's the biggest deal. You know, I've, I've been saying lately, you know, I want everybody to kind of see these these guys played really hard. And for me, they've, they've, they've honored me by doing what we've asked them to do. And that's part of buying into a program. I think a lot of people talk culture and all this about how to, what does a football program do and how do you get it going. And really, if they just buy into what the head coach normally, a lot of times it'll be good. And those guys bought into me. So I would love for everybody to come out because uh, I want to show them that if you have a little faith and if you work real hard, a lot of big things can happen. And so that's kind of what we're seeing on the field. And I would love for those guys to be rewarded with a big crowd so they can see, like, hey, we kind of brought this. Because when I got here, there were 440 people, the first game we ever had. Yeah. You know, so we're trying to, we're trying to build that up. And I think we will. Uh, but I encourage everybody to come out. <laughs> come out and watch the game. Absolutely. Again, it's 6 o'clock this Saturday as the LCU Wildcats take on Arkansas Baptist. All right. Our conversation with LCU head coach Drew Maddox. We'll look forward to talking with you again next week. Yes, sir. And that is your cat chat for this week. Claws up.